Well, Augie Dog. Can't believe it. All right, we're back the next morning, and uh, I got to tell you, I'm I'm super de duper pleased. This is the this is going to be the the base of what you see. This is a 23 and three quarter square piece of 16 gauge hot rolled steel sitting on the frame, and I am happy like a happy thing because it is, it fits on there just right. Everything is square. Square and flat. And for, you know, a new guy like me, that's, um, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> you know, uh, you'd rather be lucky than good some days. At some point, I'll get to the point where I'm good, a lot more than I'm lucky. But right now, I'm going to take what I'm going to take what uh, I'm going to take what I can get. So, I'm going to pull this off. All right, I've got a couple of brackets on the back here, so that we can hang them. I've noted 16 inches on center, so that way, if we're fortunate enough. We can sink them directly into the studs, and if not, then we'll, you know, we'll build, we'll build something. Just going to do a little tack weld here first. Why I do like to stick my hand wherever something hot is. I've moved this table away from where we were yesterday and I think we were getting some wraparound from that from the welder exhaust. So we're at the moment doing much much gooder. on my lap. We have finished, uh, or at least gotten to a, a half decent point of um, our background patina. And again, this is just vinegar uh, sprayed, I don't know, three or four times on it. Um, we didn't do anything else with it, and we're just going to leave it the way it is. Um, what I'm in the process of doing now is, what I've done is I've created a template. And this tells me where, this tells me where all of my, my frame members are. This gives me the outline of the finished stainless piece. This gives me the outline of the underlying support uh, bracket. This gives me the centers of the holes that we're going to drill for our standoff hardware. Uh, we've, we've gone, I don't know, three, four, five different, different ways, done a bunch of different tests, and I think what I'm currently thinking about doing is I'm just using hex headed bolts. They're getting the zinc uh, dissolved off of them right now so that I can weld the backing plates to the top of that bolt. Then I can mount these in these plates and uh, have a good assurance that 
you know, nothing's going to droop or nothing's going to drag or anything like that. Um, you know, they'll be be pretty darn stable. Uh, it'll be bolt welded to this and then uh, bolt going through the steel. I'll have a nut on this side. On the back side, we're going to have a washer and another bolt. <clears throat> this one is giving us um, a challenge because it happens to be going right through a center line. So uh, we've got the spots marked out where we're going to drill holes. Then we're going to drill bigger holes for the um, hardware to go through. And then on the back side of this beam, we're going to drill an even bigger hole so that we can get in there with a, uh, with a socket, uh, a deep well socket, and, uh, and affixate those to that cross position. And then the same thing up here. This is the supporting bracket. These are the two pieces that are going to, the two standoffs, and then the finished stainless piece. You know, these things are supposed to be the, the faux shizzle for doing jobs like this. And it just so happens this one goes up to a half inch and that's how big I need that hole to be. Well, how about that? Drilled a pilot hole with a nice new sharp bit. Added bonus. It locates them on the back side for me. Now if you want to do a super neat install, take one of these magnets on a stick, put it in at an angle, and start sweeping it back and forth. This is the third trip and then just drop it in your bucket. All right, you can see our uh, cleaning strength vinegar. You know, regular vinegar is 6%. Uh, cleaning vinegar is seven. Um, you see all the little bubbles? Dissolving that zinc off of there because I've not found a place in my town yet that sells just raw steel fixtures. They're all zinc coated or shiny zinc electroplated. These are like hot dipped. <clears throat> so we're going to let that sit overnight and then we'll come back tomorrow. Give them a good rinse, uh, give them a good brushing, and then we should be able to um, should be should be good to go. Should be ready to uh, weld those to the base plates. All right, here we are back the next day, and uh, this stuff is still working. You can see these big flakes of zinc. So if I Pull this one up. You can see that there's still chunks of it on there. And we're still bubbling, which means we're still working. So we're gonna pretend we're act like a teenager and aggravate this. Because we're just gonna let this stuff set and work. Until it's done. See like that one was kind of laying on the bottom. So it's got uh, it's got a lot more on it. 
you know we could we could wire brush a bunch of this stuff off but to be honest with you I would rather not get that airborne I would rather it stay contained in this fluid it's a lot easier for me to deal with that so anyways we'll just keep it going All right, we're back working on the supports I have tack welded uh, these two bolts oh they're still warm crap um, tack welded these two bolts on uh, we haven't gotten haven't gotten too hot on them and uh, it fits in nicely to where it's supposed to be you can see I've just I've just gone and marked out where the bolts the confines of the bolts are supposed to go and uh, now we're just we're getting them getting them welded on there taking turns with them letting them cool down because I want to keep this as flat as I can we're already we're getting a little bit of a little bit of wiggle in it it's not too bad right now but I still got to I've still got to do the the full weld on these because these are going to be at a 90 degree angle and I want to make sure that these hold All right, I've gotten the majority of the discoloration off, the majority of the, at least the deep scratches off. <clears throat> and so now we're over here with uh, some clamps and a Scotch-Brite, maroon Scotch-Brite pad on a sanding pad. And uh, more amazing exciting stuff this is a lot like guitar building you do lots of stuff that will just absolutely wreck your shoulders is there an easier way to do this i know there is do i know what it is or can i afford it that remains to be seen so we're just getting some final adjustments done on this. Uh, I've got this old machinist clamp and I use this so I can put it around a certain area and I can kind of tweak it up one way or tweak it down the other way and then just check it with a straight edge. See that we're pretty close. And then before we put this tape on we're going to prep both the inside of the box as well as the base that it's going to go on to. We're going to try to get any grease, any oil off of it. Just some acetone. Because, uh, man, once this stuff sticks, she's stuck. And anything you would have to do to her, you're going to have to do in the bad position. Uh, again, this is this is 3M's VHB tape, and uh, it's pretty stout stuff. Moment of terror. And 
there we are. The stuff is supposed to, I guess, fully adhere in like 24 hours. It's just something I heard. You know, I'll have to go up, I'll have to get online and look it up and uh, clarify back with you on that. So now that we've got this in, this is the distance. So now we can for sure set this, finish trimming that top mounting piece off of there and uh, get the assembly part of this completed. All right, a quick trip to the 3M uh, website tells us this is VHB tape because letters are hard. And um, according to their marketing wank, um, apparently this, it gains strength over time. Uh, it's got a pretty good, um, it can temporarily take heats. Heats, wow, just making crap up today. It can temporarily uh, take um, temperatures up to 450 degrees and uh, retain its holding capabilities. Hopefully we don't uh, install it into anything that's gonna get that crazy. Uh, expensive, but uh, yeah, it's good stuff. Brilliant, I found the perfect spacer to make sure that I have my inch in between the elements here. Now it's the same process, clean, apply the strips, let's double check, yep, that's good, yep, that's good. Nice, huh? Take a look. the wiring up back here we'll wire tie that up uh, these are brackets that we can hang 16 inches on center so we can you know double stud it wherever we're going or if we have to hang a backing plate you know however we however we want to do that <coughs> access holes for the middle one um, you can see the wiring is going through a hole over here, then down here is where our uh, sensor is going. And the sensor is, it's 
right there. Probably can't see it. It's tucked away right there in the corner. Just a piece of uh, of uh, the tape, the VHB tape. All right, let's clean it up. Hope you found this episode educational or entertaining or maybe even both you might want to check this one out as well be sure to hit the subscribe button hit the little bell to be notified when new videos drop and if you've got comments make sure you put them down beneath the sermon notes thanks for hanging out with us here at the rattle can fab shop y'all have a good one cheers <laughs>